Are you applying to Brown? Are you interested in the Brown Open curriculum? And do you want to learn more about it? Don't worry, I got your back. Hey everyone, I'm Jason Patel, the founder of Transition, and we've helped thousands of students pick the right college. And I'm looking forward to helping you. Before getting started, please press subscribe if you're interested in learning more about college and career topics. Our videos cover everything from college essays to picking the right college to picking the right major. In this video, I cover what is the Brown Open Curriculum, how does the Brown Open Curriculum work, Brown's requirements for graduation, Brown Open Curriculum grading system, the pros and cons of the Brown Open Curriculum. Let's get started. The Brown Open Curriculum sparks many questions from applicants and future Brown students. Who is in charge of your education? If you ask a college student this question, he or she would likely reply, I am. Although this is the way it should be, with learners taking an active role in shaping their own learning, a majority of undergraduate and graduate programs are not set up in a way that facilitates student choice. Brown University is looking to change this through an innovative structure known as the Brown Open Curriculum. So what is the Brown Open Curriculum? Most freshman college experiences go something like this. You choose a major, you're handed a course catalog that details every required class for that particular degree path, and then you meet with an advisor who explains the order in which you will take the pre-selected courses. If you're lucky, you might get to choose between a few different electives here and there. But for the most part, you will have little say in what you learn while in school. For 50 years, Brown University has been encouraging students to take a very different route from the traditional college path. Students are allowed to develop a personalized course of study, based on passions and interests. Brown calls students architects of their own education. It has created a distinctive approach that allows learners to play a hands-on role in designing their own academic blueprint. One of the missions of Brown University is to make sure that each and every student is engaged, empowered, and transformed by their education. The flexibility of their academic structure supports this goal. Individual, experimentative, integrative. These three words summarize the Brown program, which is based on three principles. Number one, students should be active in their education and responsible for directing their own learning. Learning is not about transmitting information, but a process of individual development that is different for every person. The curriculum used to facilitate learning should encourage individuality, experimentation, and integrate important information from various fields and disciplines. So how does the Brown Open curriculum exactly work? Brown University does not have majors. This shocks many students who know how common it is to have to choose a course path before they even step foot on campus. Instead, Brown offers over 80 concepts concentration paths. Like a traditional model, Brown's undergraduate concentrations are geared toward a particular focus. All these paths lead to a bachelor's degree in either arts or science. While students are required to complete courses offered in one of these concentrations, they also have the freedom to explore classes that are not related to their primary area of study. Here's the list of Brown University undergraduate concentrations. Concentrations offered through the Brown Open Curriculum include Africana Studies, American Studies, Anthropology, Applied Mathematics, Applied Mathematics Biology, Applied Mathematics Computer Science, Applied Mathematics Economics, Archaeology in the Ancient World, Architecture, Astronomy, Behavioral Decision Sciences, Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, Biology, Biomedical Engineering, Biophysics, Business, Entrepreneurship and Organizations, Chemical Physics, Chemistry, Classics, Cognitive Neuroscience, Cognitive Science, Comparative Literature, Computational Biology, Computer Science, Computer Science Economics, Contemplative Studies, Development Studies, East Asian Studies, Economics, Education Studies, Egyptology and Assyriology, Engineering, Engineering and Physics, English, Environmental Studies, Ethnic Studies, French and Francophone Studies, Gender and Sexuality Studies, Geology, Physics, Mathematics, German Studies, Health and Human Biology, Hispanic Literatures and Culture, History, History of Art and Architecture, Independent Concentration, International Relations, Italian Studies, Judaic Studies, Latin American and Caribbean Studies, Linguistics, Literary Arts, Mathematics, Mathematics, Computer Science, Mathematics, Economics, Medieval Cultures, Middle East Studies, Modern Culture and Media, Music, Modern Studies, Physics, Physics and Philosophy, Political Science, Portuguese and Brazilian Studies, Psychology, Public Health, Public Policy, Religious Studies, Renaissance and Early Society, Science, Technology, Slavic Studies, Social Analysis and Research, Sociology, South Asian Studies, Statistics, Theater, Arts and Performance Studies, urban studies, visual art. As you can see from the list I stated, Brown University offers a wide range of areas of education focus for undergrad students. Instead of having to focus on history or art, learners who are part of a Brown Open Curriculum program could gain in-depth knowledge about anthropology, medieval cultures, visual art, or architecture. Many Brown students have learned the importance of asking around for course recommendations and the best professors. Some of the coolest classes at Brown include the following. Interactions with the dead, past and present, Q 
kitchen chemistry, ancient comedy and its influence, computers, freedom and privacy, current topics in law and policy. As you can see, you could study almost anything as an undergraduate at Brown. The possibilities are endless and awesome. Although not as well known, Brown has a graduate school as well with 51 doctoral programs and 33 master's programs offered. There are also special programs including the program in liberal medical education, PLME, which leads to medical school and the Brown RISD dual degree program, which allows students to earn two degrees a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science in just five years. By the way, we have a video guide and a written guide to Brown PLME, so go ahead and check our video library. Research opportunities, internships, and international fellowships are a part of Brown University's academic offering. These are the Brown requirements of graduation. To have the degree awarded, all Brown students must meet these requirements. Quantity requirement. Brown is not focused on credit hours in the same way that other universities are. It instead counts each course. Every semester, students can choose to take a minimum of three to a maximum of five courses. To successfully graduate, students must pass at least 30 courses with at least an A, B, C, or S for satisfactory. Concentration requirement. Earlier, I discussed the fact that Brown requires students to complete classes in at least one concentration. The program chosen is not, in most cases, focused on a particular career goal. It is an in-depth study that targets the following, the understanding of a problem or discipline, intellectual development, and personal growth. Students must declare a field of concentration by the end of the fourth semester. This means that before this period of time, students are able to test the waters and try out courses in various fields. Changes in declaration are allowed under certain circumstances, and students may finish more than one concentration area. However, students are not allowed to overlap course requirements as a way of taking shortcuts through multiple concentration areas. So don't think of doing that. Let's look at a case study of how this might work. Kirsten, a brown freshman, is having trouble declaring between two concentrations, theater arts and psychology. On the one hand, she loves the arts. Being on stage is one of her greatest passions, and she already misses learning about and being part of stage productions like she did in high school. Kirsten also wants to be a child psychologist. Although she enjoys theater, she's also interested in the human mind, how it works, and wants to learn to help others overcome mental health struggles, which is a very noble cause. At a regular university, Kirsten will be forced to choose between the two early on. At Brown, she has options. In the end, Kirsten opted to work a few theater courses into her early semesters at Brown. Through these courses, she was able to make community connections that allowed her to take part in productions outside of school. By the time she entered her third semester, Kirsten was ready to declare psychology as her concentration. The writing requirement. Strong reading and writing skills are a requirement for degree concentration across the board. Students who struggle with writing are required to work with faculty to develop a plan for improving this skill area before their degree can be awarded. The residency requirement. Although students are permitted to resume their education at Brown University after attending school somewhere else, there are residency graduation requirements that all students must follow. In general, a student must meet the following. Be enrolled for at least four semesters as a full-time student, complete a minimum of 15 courses successfully at Brown, entering the resumed undergraduate education program allows students to study part-time at Brown, but the minimum course requirement still stands. Tuition enrollment requirement. According to Brown University degree requirements, prior to the awarding of a baccalaureate degree, each candidate normally must have accumulated credit for the payment of a minimum of eight semesters of tuition or the equivalent. There are specific rules governing tuition for summer versus winter courses that must be considered during enrollment time should you decide to pursue a degree at Brown University. Let's move on to the Brown Open Curriculum Grading. Because students are encouraged to be explorers and take on a variety of challenging courses in various fields of study, Brown University adopted a grading system that complements its open curriculum model. Students have choices. They take a course for a letter grade, A, B, or C, or they can choose a satisfactory S slash no credit scale. There are no pluses or minuses, only solid grades. Also, there are no Ds or Fs with the Brown Open Curriculum since failing grades are not recorded. There are also no grade point averages calculated at Brown. Although this makes it difficult to compare a Brown University transcript with that from another school, there are many benefits that support such a grading system. For one, it allows students to focus less on obtaining a certain grade, i.e. a number, and more on immersing themselves in the learning materials presented. Also, Brown provides students with other forms of learning proof that show their academic growth much more clearly than a specific letter grade ever could. These include letters of recommendation, performance reports, qualitative evidence from capstone projects. These are some of the drawbacks of the Brown Open Curriculum. The Brown Open Curriculum has so many benefits, but as with everything, there are some cons to entering such a program. The proponents of a more traditional plan for learning believe that structure is important and that such a flexible learning plan is difficult for students fresh out of high school and still in need of guidance. This is why Brown has seasoned advisors on staff to help guide students in their choices, as well as strict semester deadlines for choosing a concentration area. Students are also encouraged to be organized and seek out help if 
they're struggling. Also, there's criticism that some Brown students take the easy way out and seek out the open curriculum to avoid being challenged by subjects that they do not like or are difficult for them. For example, most universities require prerequisites, which I hated in college. This means that even if you're a liberal arts major, you must take some basic math or chemistry courses. A student who hates math or chemistry might try to avoid this by going to a school like Brown that does not require math heavy courses. Many feel that although this makes the student more comfortable, it puts them at a disadvantage later on, which I don't believe is true. Although taking the driver's seat down the road of their own education can be difficult for some students in the beginning, the rewards are plentiful. You can get a well-rounded education through Brown's open curriculum. A student can be a pre-med student and still learn French, both designed and studied Russian literature. The ability to explore without risk minimizes most of the drawbacks. Next up is course rigor of the open curriculum. Some people assume that an open curriculum equals easy or less difficult. This is far from the truth. In fact, Brown University prides itself on providing opportunities to gain in-depth knowledge. The admission process is not an easy one. Only 9% of those who apply to Brown get accepted. And besides, it's an Ivy League school. It's just hard to get into. This means that potential students must really focus on their studies during high school if they want a chance of exploring at Brown. One thing that makes the Brown Open Curriculum stand out other than the comprehensive nature is the fun. You wouldn't normally equate college classes to fun, but when you're learning about something you're passionate about, you can't help but enjoy it. It's what makes life so beautiful. Being a Brown student comes with community deals and discounts as well, making your life at Brown even more enjoyable. The Brown Open Curriculum is a comprehensive, flexible way for students to plunge into a wide array of interests. Brown wants the students to be active in their education and develop their individual tastes and thoughts. By studying different disciplines, students get a taste of different trains of thought, perspectives, and scholarly work. If you're looking to challenge yourself, exercise freedom in your academic pursuits, and develop your individual academic preferences, consider the Brown Open Curriculum. It just might be for you. And that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot about the Brown Open Curriculum. If you like this video, please press subscribe at the bottom to see more of our videos on college and career topics. And now it's your turn. In the comments, tell us any questions you have on how to choose the right school for you. I'll try to get back to you and give you some really great advice. Okay, guys, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.